recording? Recording. Okay. Sound check's good. So documentary class, uh, basically we had to figure out what we were going to do our documentary on. And while we were trying to decide, um, I actually came up uh, with the idea of maybe doing it on uh, Michael Sharp, uh, who had died the year before. I think the most exciting part about this documentary in particular has been realizing that it's such a bigger story than we had thought we had. It was actually going to have to change a lot um, throughout the process, just from conducting interviews and learning um, more about the story. Uh, what we had previously learned was not actually um, necessarily what um, was true. It hasn't been as much of like a how-to on documentary. It's been much more of a trial and error of documentary. The best way to, if you know how to use cameras already and you know how to frame things and like there's not really much else to teach unless you just go out and do it anyway. Doing a documentary is a lot more work than I thought it would be. Um, I guess one huge thing that I learned is just that when making a documentary you have to be very flexible. <laughs> you don't realize how how many things could possibly go wrong until you actually get into the field. Um, so one of our first experiences uh, was interviewing Nancy Heisey and um, just about everything went wrong in that interview. Um, uh, our secondary camera uh, would not work on the settings the class decided on. Um, so we had a bailout on our secondary camera. Uh, one of our lights was completely dead and we didn't have chargers. And then to top it all off, there was a nice um, line sticking out of Nancy Heisey's head that, um, yeah, it, it was just a rough interview. So. Uh, the next one went better. I did three interviews that day, so it got progressively better throughout the day. I think the most exciting part about this documentary is, so far for me, has been seeing what the answers are to the questions that we've prepared for the subjects and the interviews. I think one of the most exciting things that uh, that have happened that's happened so far is uh, our trip to Kansas. Um, exciting and stressful and lots of other feelings because especially after Kansas when we finally had some sort of understanding of oh this is kind of where we want to go with it uh, that click that moment where you're like oh we actually know what we're doing now kind of uh, when we first got involved with this we had thought that we were just talking about a guy who lived a great life and was doing great things um, and then we obviously realized that there's a lot more to the story than we had originally thought I didn't know much about the situation in the Congo or MJ or Zaida, and through this experience I've learned a lot. I, I've become very um, eye-open to the, uh, I guess, the events happening in the UN and things we just don't know about, and so I've become kind of aware of that. I've learned a lot of things that I had no idea were going on. Um, it's. I guess you could say it's made me a little more cynical um, about the world, but at the same time um, has made me realize how many good people are still out there. So many bad things can happen to people um, who are trying to bring good into the world. It definitely is hard um, and heartbreaking um, just how such great people can come to um, such a cruel demise, I guess you could say. Um, and it's something that I, I've grown up knowing, but actually doing this documentary and kind of making it a little more personal is, uh, it's a different feeling, I would say. Um, it, it brings a whole new perspective to the situation. I was partially worried that I would become um like desensitized to the story, um, where like in, in some sense I am because I'm not afraid to say certain things like oftentimes we refer to Michael and Zaida's death um, uh, as the event, 
I felt like when we were interviewing Joelle, who was MJ's uh, best friend from college, uh, her talking about their future together and the adventures they had planned on going on and just the stories that they shared. Um, I felt the most connected with her stories just because they were so personable. The fact that no matter who we've talked to, and we've talked to people in Germany, in Sweden, in the United States, Kansas, Harrisonburg, uh, they all seem to have one vision of who MJ Sharp was. A lot of the times the stories are very fascinating and not what you're expecting and I've been able to create a real connection to MJ and Sida both through interviewing their friends and family. Hearing John and Michelle speak the way they spoke about Michael and some of the things they would say like, um, I guess we'll never find out now or like just those little things to see these parents trying to almost hold back in their grief um, because we don't know how they act when there's not a film crew with them. So I don't know um, how much they didn't say to us, uh, but yet you can still see the pain in, in, their, in their eyes and just like in a lot of the things that they said. and. Um, yeah, I mean, there were several times where I had to pull back my own tears just because I can't even imagine being in a situation like that. Through the media today, I feel it's kind of hard to realize um, a lot of the good points um, in the world. And because of that, uh, doing this documentary and learning that there's people out there who actually genuinely care about uh, people besides themselves um, and people close to them and just the general populace, um, sort of brings a bit of light back uh, into the world, I guess you could say. I have already begun to see the qualities of MJ and other people, and I've kind of grown to appreciate those qualities, and I've been trying to kind of grow in those qualities myself, and I feel like this documentary um, process as a whole has just caused me to see, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of really good things in the world that go unnoticed or um, go unappreciated because in the time that they were here and they touched so many lives, you don't, you honestly really don't see it until something like that is gone from the world. And I wouldn't say that it has changed the way I've thought about the documentary itself, um, but more so about what's going on around us that we're completely blind to. And I think that is what we're opening up with this documentary.